Hello everyone. In this video, we want to talk about the settings in project or general data for Cypcad and Cyp3D. Actually, the settings in general data using Cypcad or Cyp3D are almost same. And uh, so here we are going to cover that part. So right now I'm using Cypcad. And as you can see here, just by going to the uh, project, as you can see here, I can go to the project and here I have the general data. You can go there and from here so you need to set the parameters here so the first option here you have the description so definitely here you can write the name of the project and if you have any uh, comment here so you can put it here <clears throat> and also here you have the codes so from here you can set different codes you have the concrete codes for different international codes cold form steel a true steel timber aluminium Reinforced concrete block wall and composite slab can be designed according to EC6 and EC4 respectively. So this is for the codes and then here you have the settings for the reinforced concrete. So first of all here we have different <coughs> grade of the concrete for different elements. As you can see here we have the floor slabs, foundation, columns and walls. So for each of them, so simply from here you can select the grade of the concrete. Okay, and also here you have the aggregate properties as well. So you can click on that. If you are using the same aggregate for all the elements, so you can select the first one. If you are using different aggregate size for different elements, so you can use different aggregate size as well. And beside each of these um, options, so here you have the um, you know, small icon. So you can just click on this icon, for example, under Flores Lab. So again, if you have the different type of uh, slabs for example for the stairs so you have the landing so then here you, have, you can set the concrete grade or if you integrated the 3d structure or you uh, import uh, the cyp 3d model to cypcad so again from here you can set the uh, grade of the concrete for flores slabs uh, in different manner and also for a slope beam so the grade of the concrete can be uh, set here and from here also you have different floors. Assume that you have the multi-story building and maybe for some of the floors you have different uh, grade uh, of the concrete. So that's why here you can specify the grade of the concrete for each floor in this field that you can see right now. Likewise for the foundation, also you can go to this option, small icon that you have here. And if you want to consider the soil structure interaction, so you can click on here, verify footings sliding. And from here, you can get the information from the Geotech engineer and you can key in the value here. And uh, so maybe here I need to a bit explain about this. So here you have the persistent situation and also you have the seismic and accidental uh, situation. So for uh, foundation or let's say, you know, soil of the foundation. So here you have these two options. And if you go to this small arrow that you have here in the blue color, just click on that and you can get the standard value of the allowable bearing pressure of the soil for different characteristics gravel dense sand medium dense sand loose sand and so on and so forth and as you can see here you have the values again under uh, persistent situation or let's say normal situation and also under seismic or accidental situation especially once you have the uh, lateral uh, movement or lateral force due to earthquake load or wind load so you can use these values as well and also in terms of the foundation design, so you can consider the wind combination and also earthquake combination. So if you don't have any wind or earthquake in your um, loading, so you don't need to consider the wind and earthquake combination for designing the foundation. So this is actually setting for foundation. And also you can go to the column here. Again, you can specify the grade of the column by the uh, or let's say uh, according to the uh, fillers that you have. For example, here I have two fillers. So uh, in both fillers, I'm using uh, C30 slash 37. And that's why here you can see actually no double prime. So which means uh, the software using the same grade of the concrete. But from here, simply I can change it, for example, to C20. But let me just go back to here. Okay, and also for the wall, so you have two options. So the first option, if you click here, again, you can grade the uh, 
or change the grade of the uh, concrete for the wall in different floors. And the second one is uh, particularly for masonry walls. So you can click on this and from here, so you can again set the values for the masonry wall, like modulus of elasticity, shear modulus, unit weight, and so on and so forth. So another important thing that I need to tell you is that so these settings are, we call it one-time setting. So it means that, you know, once you are satisfied with this setting and once you found them, uh, they are based on the uh, requirement that, uh, you know, in your company, so you can save them as default setting. So you don't need to waste your time every time after opening the software, come here and change the settings. No, just one-time setting, that's it. Okay, so I'm not going to save anything here. And then here again, steel, we are talking about the reinforced concrete grade. And here you have the steel. So this steel actually is for longitudinal and transverse uh, reinforcement or steel. So that's why here you can see the bars. So from here by default again, or generally you can uh, select the grade of the uh, longitudinal and transfer reinforcement here. Or if you want to, let's say be more specific, so you can go to this option. So if I click on that, so from here you have different options for setting the grade of the uh, reinforcement. So as you can see here, the first option is in column, walls, and core belt. And from here, so you can select the grade of this, uh, let's say, uh, reinforcement of these elements. And also you have the floor slab. So you have the option to adjust the grade of the reinforcement in the beams, in the slabs, waffle slabs, joist floor slab as well and also for the reinforcement of the foundation. Okay, so for the uh, foundation beam and also mat foundation and also in the footing or pad footing, combined footing and also pile cap. So you can select the grade of the concrete here. So in this window that uh, already we use this small icon, also you can do some other things as well. For example, you can arrange the reinforcement or you can set the reinforcement rule for yourself. For example, here, if I go to the reinforcement option that you have here for columns, walls, and corbels, uh, so I can click on this small icon here, just click on that. And from here, as you can see, you have different options. Reinforcement table, so you have the <clears throat> reinforcement for columns, shear walls, and wall horizontal reinforcement. Again, for shear walls and other walls, for vertical reinforcement, for core belt, a primary reinforcement table and also stirrup reinforcement table for the corbel as well. If you go, for example, to the column, so here you can get the uh, reinforcement information for the columns, for the rectangular column, and also for circular column as well. And from here, simply you can set up the reinforcement that you want to use. Okay, just you need to, let's say, uncheck or check the reinforcement that you want to uh, be used in your project and also here you have some additional information about the longitudinal reinforcement configuration so here you can read it by yourself and also for the stirrups so you can go to the stirrup arrangement so you can click on that and then so if you have more than uh, let's say two phase uh, reinforcement so you can come up with one of this uh, let's say a pattern for the uh, stirrups. Not only that, also here you have the options for circular stirrups as well. So you need to just, you know, uh, review the uh, parameters uh, because uh, we know that, you know, for every company, they are actually, you know, looking for different requirements. So that's why, so it is completely depends on the user and, the, you know, the engineer uh, that work, you know, with uh, different uh, companies. So that's why uh, we leave it actually you now to you as an engineer and you can set up you know the values here but they again you know the most important thing that i wanted to tell you is that so always you can set them as default setting so here you have the option to save them as default setting and uh, if you want to uh, create the library for yourself for reinforcement so from here so you can export the reinforcement as a library or as a, as a template you can also import the a reinforcement table as your own library and you can use it here okay so if you want to create a library please contact us and we can help you to uh, create the reinforcement library for yourself 
Okay, so I will cancel this. And from here also you can set or check, you know, other options as well. For example, if I go to the reinforcement arrangement, as you can see here, you have the bar layout, you have the splice at the lower level. So you can, you know, just review, you know, this uh, options, column start uh, option. So how do you want to connect the reinforcement of the column to the foundation? So all of them, you know, can be set up here. And again, so always you have these save these settings as default settings as well. Okay, similarly here, you have the information, not only for changing the grade of the uh, beam element, column element, slab elements, also, as I showed you here in the column, so also you can go to the, for example, beam and click on this small icon that you have here, you can click on that, and again here you have the beam reinforcement table, foundation beam reinforcement table, and so on and so forth. So just you need to check these options by yourself and set the parameters according to your requirement. And... Uh, <coughs> Also from uh, here, so this is a small icon, uh, as you can see, so you have the stair options. So from here, you can set up the uh, parameters for staircases. So as, as you know, in Sidecat, we have the uh, parametric uh, staircases. So it is actually you now one of the difference between setting that you have in Sidecat and Sidecat3D. So in Sidecat3D, you don't have this option. Okay, and uh, the last one, so I can say that, you know, is the uh, uh, general setting. So simply you can go to click on that. For example, you can go to the cover. And as you can see here, you have the um, cover for uh, different elements, column and walls, beams, flat slab, waffle slab, and so on and so forth. And if you want to change them, so by default, you can see the uh, covers. So let's say, for example, for the columns, so I can go to the option that I have here, just click on that, and then from here you can change the cover. Or, for example, for holocore slab, so you can click on this, and then from here you can set the covers. So this is actually, you know, the thing that you can do. And uh, so let me come out from this one. And also here we have the bolt option. The bolt option is for uh, designing the connections. So in both SwipeCAD and Swipe3D, so you can design the connections as well. So that's why here you have the setting for the bolts. For example, you can select the grade of the bolt. And also here you have the option for base plate option. So you can click on that. And from here, so you can set up the uh, parameters for base plate. So let me take you to the Swipe3D. So if I go to the Swipe3D and then to the general data, so, so here for the bolt, you see here, you have the options for the columns, for the foundation, for the beam. So under this option, so again, the same thing you have as I showed you in SwipeCAD. For example, if I go under column, so here you have the reinforcement table. And then so here, if you click on that, you see here you have the same parameters. Okay, if I go to the reinforcement arrangement, so you see here already I showed them uh, to you um, using SwipeCAD. So you have the same settings, but uh, I want to talk about this. So you have the joints, which is actually now the connections. And also in SideCAD, you have the, uh, let's say here, bolts, which is actually now for setting the connections uh, parameter. So, but in Side3D is, let's say in, in under general data is uh, uh, more detail. However, in SideCAD, once you run the analysis, so let me accept this. If I go to the result, Okay, and then here you have the uh, joints, and from here you have the joint analysis option. So you can click on this, and then here you have the joint analysis option. You have the options for setting the non pre stress bolts, pre stress bolt, and also a stiffener. So let me take you back to Swipe3D. In Swipe3D, once you click on joints, so here you have the material, and also you have the option. If you go to the option, you see you will get the same settings. Okay, so this is actually, you know, just a uh, uh, the same thing, but uh, in different uh, manner. So that's why, so once you are familiar, you know, with one of these settings, doesn't matter from SideCAD or Side3D, so definitely you can set up the settings for yourself. So let me go back to SideCAD and then go to Project, General Data. So we talked about the bolts and also we talked about the um, setting the concrete grade and also the grade of the reinforcement, which is all related to RC elements. So that's why here we have the options, you know, to set up these options. And then here you have the settings for steel elements and also for timber and 
extruded aluminium. So for the steel, so you have the ruled and welded sections. So simply you can set up, for example, to S275. And for cold form, so again here, you can set up the cold form grade according, you know, to selected code. Okay, and also for the timber, and also you have the for aluminium. So the next option is loads. So simply you can go to the uh, loads option. And as you can see here, so in SideCAD, so you can generate the wind load and seismic load uh, automatically. So that's why for the wind load, so always you can go to, let's say the option that you have, let's say, for example, here, just let me just to cancel this. If I just click on wind load or with wind load, so you have this setting. So from here, you can go for uh, selecting different codes. So for example, you can go to generate the wind load according to uh, British code. So here you have the uh, Euro code one, and also you have the uh, the main British standard, which is BS uh, 6399, or you can set up the uh, parameters for wind load according to uh, Euro code. Okay, and also you have different uh, international codes if you are involved in different countries, so you can use this codes as well. And definitely from here, so you can go for considering the P delta effect or second uh, order effect. So if you want to consider that one so you need to click on here and then so from here you can uh, consider it into your analysis and also you have the seismic loading so just you need to check this option and again from here so you have different international codes so for those who are um, designing the structure in Malaysia so here also we have the Malaysia annex as well and for different regions for peninsular Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak. And from here again, so you have all the uh, other information which is according to uh, Malaysia Annex. Uh, another important thing that I can tell you, so always uh, you have actually you know this question marks, so you can click on them and you can get you know extra information or detailed information to uh, get the uh, exact value. So you can always you know, come to this options to get the more information about uh, whatever you have. So this is actually, you know, for seismic. And again, so here you can go to the uh, a second order effect for activating it if you want to consider the P delta effect. And definitely, so in this software, we can go for um, apply the earthquake load as the static or equivalent lateral force, or you can go for dynamic analysis, which is modal spectra correspond to spectrum analysis. So here, uh, since the dynamic uh, analysis is selected, so that's why here you have the design spectrum, so you can click on that. And based on the settings that you have here, so you can uh, see the respond to spectrum as well. Okay, and uh, also if you want to consider the fire resistant check, so you can, you know, just click on that. And from here, so you have the options to create the, uh, let's say, uh, or consider the uh, fire resistant check for your structure. Okay, if you don't want, so simply you can, let's say, uncheck this option as well. And uh, also from here, you have the limited state or combination. So for the combination, uh, the software automatically generate the combination. So you don't need to worry about that. But if you want to create your own combination, so it's possible. So again, so you can actually, you know, come to, uh, our training, or you can also uh, contact us if you want to create the uh, load combination by yourself. But uh, the way actually is here under displacement, and from here you have the configure combination for each limited state. So you need to click on that, and based on the material or governing material that you have for your structure, assume that you have the concrete structure, and then come here and you have the general data and here also you have the project situation introduced by the user, okay? And from here, so you can specify the, let's say ULS or SLS by clicking on these two options. So which is add ULS or add SLS. And also you have the additional load cases or the load types. So from here, simply you can go to the uh, first option, the categories of the live load. So simply you can go there and you can specify the, uh, let's say the category of the live load uh, depends on the 
uh, type of the, um, let's say, area that you have. So as you can see here, you have the uh, categories for domestic and household offices, meeting area, shops, warehouses, and so on and so forth. So at the same time, also, you can create or select, uh, you know, different options as well. And uh, the cell rate will be calculated automatically by the software. So you have the uh, primary dead load and live load. So that's why you can see, you know, these two options um, will be generated automatically under automatic option. So this is actually, you know, the primary dead load and live load. If you want to have the additional live load or dead load, simply you can go there. For example, I want to add the live load. So here, simply I can go there. And then from here, new additional load case. From here, you can rename it and then you can accept it and then so you can accept so right now as you can see here you have another additional let's say load live load and uh, similar for uh, dead load so you can add any other load that you can see here for example for the wind load so you can add it uh, automatically by checking this option or you can add it uh, manually which is under additional so that's why here so again you need to click on this small icon and from here, for example, you want to say that W1 or wind one, and then so you can accept it, and then you can accept. So here you have the wind load. So this is actually, you know, the way that uh, you can specify the uh, different load types by yourself, and you can include it to your project. So let me just cancel this. And here you have the effective length factor for columns, for concrete and composite columns, for steel columns, and also for timber columns. So you can uh, specify this as well here. And also you have the other options, which is the last one. And this is actually you now for uh, checking the crack width for the beams and also for the pile caps. So that's why here you can click on the beams and then here you can specify the environment that uh, the structure is going to be uh, constructed. So you can select it and also for the pile cap. So you can select the environment or let's say exposure uh, condition. So this is actually you know the setting for site CAD, um, and as we said that you know this is mm, almost you know similar with uh, site 3D. So if I go back to site 3D, so from here, so you have the same thing. So you have the codes. So you have the section which is actually you know for steel section. So you have the ruled steel, cold form steel, timber, aluminium, and concrete. So it is actually you know the uh, general one. So you can set the uh, grade of this uh, material for yourself. Okay, and uh, here if you want to be more specific, again you know for setting the grade of the concrete elements. For example, for concrete column, or for uh, let's say uh, floor and concrete beams and also for foundation elements so you can specify from here so which means you can be uh, more specific for setting the grade of the concrete elements and again here you have the bar steel so which means again the setting or uh, set, uh, set the grades for the longitudinal and transfer reinforcement for the uh, different concrete elements as well so from here so you can select on this and as you can see here you have the longitudinal and transfer reinforcement for the columns, beams, and also different foundation elements as well. So from here, you can set up the uh, grade of these elements as well. And also you have the aggregate. So again, so you can click on that. So you have the four concrete columns, floor slab beams, foundation beam, and also uh, foundation uh, option as well. And also you can go to the cover. You can set the cover for the column, for the beam, and also for the foundation, for example footing and pile caps and also a strap and tie beams and again so you have the save as default setting option just to save your time and if you remember under SIPCAD uh, general data settings so for activating the soil structure interaction so I showed you how to do that here in Save 3 d also you have the option foundation soil so the explanation is exactly same and also under load so you can generate the uh, seismic load automatically in Save 3 d so just you need to click on that and again you know same thing that I showed you in SIPCAD so I don't want to waste your time and also you have the fire resistant check limited state or combination uh, additional load cases or load types so already I showed you and also foundation so if you click on the foundation already under SIPCAD setting uh, we explained that you know if you have the wind 
combination or wind load and earthquake load so you can add those loads to the combination for designing the foundation okay so here you have the option and uh, under option here so this is all related to foundation uh, sorry related to concrete uh, elements for example concrete column concrete beam and foundation if i go to select on the beam so you have the option the first one just click on that and as you can see here again you have the same settings as i showed you in sidecad as well so just we need to uh, you know go through them and change the parameters and uh, the last one is environment which is actually now for checking the crack width of the beams under different conditions so you can click on this and as you can see here so you have the exposure class and the different uh, let's say condition so just you need to select them with different let's say categories and you can also set up the maximum crack width as well so this is actually uh, the settings for sidecad and side 3d and hopefully uh, after seeing this video so uh, you will be familiar with the settings and uh, so without any problem so you can set the parameters and start your project Thank you so much. If you have any question, if you have any comments, please uh, leave your comment to us and we will come back to you as soon as possible. Stay tuned with us and have a great day. Bye bye.